Yeah, good evening, my brother. How good. are you? I'm good. We also have Benjamin Boachi, who is executive director for the uh, Africa Center for Energy Policy. Uh, he is joining us via Zoom. Thank you for joining us, Ben. Uh, thanks for having me. Great. Let me start with you, uh, Mr. Poku. Uh, are we in doom so yet? And what could possibly explain why ECG has not put out a timetable yet? My brother, you see, uh, some of these things, we tend to stretch the magnitude of what's happening. I think your gentleman you spoke to um, bundle of issues together. Um, ongoing maintenance always happens. Um, that is why they detect in the sector there's something called your spin capacity, which is your ethyl capacity that is used to mitigate some of these um, work that goes on. Currently, if you look at the total installed capacity that we have as a nation, it's about 5,138 megawatts thereabout. Um, what we use currently is about 4,200. Um, there is a lot of room in terms of what you need for your shutdowns of what your gentleman did. The breakdown he did about Tapco being down, Tico, and also maybe one turbine at Akosombo being refurbished. There is room for those shutdowns. That will not send us into the situation where it, clearly the situation at hand is Wapco losing their pipeline. That happened yesterday, but the explanation to that is not that um, WAPCO is not being paid any money. Um, as at the before the holidays, WAPCO was paid for uh, 40 million Ghana cities, which was equivalent of 3.25 million dollars. Um, with the problem that WAPCO is having, sorry, the, yeah, the problem that WAPCO is having is trying to find the management of GMPC to with them to talk about the legacy. There is a debt that exists which needs to be resolved. Unfortunately, the managing director of GMP is hardly ever on his seat. And that is one of the frustrating things that some of us are having in the sector. Um, we've been basically advocating that government should let the cash water pour pay WAPCO directly instead of the money going through GMP because the problem and the frustration WAPCO has is the non-communication from GMP. So, 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 um, so a lot of effort is being put in place to mitigate that thing where going forward, if the powers that be do listen to the advice that some of us are given, is that we should let the cash waterfall pay WAPCO directly. In the well, way last way. year when this happened, government entered into a, uh, an agreement with WAPCO. They pay some $6 million no, out of the you debt. See, when you say government, mm -hmm. it is GMPC that holds. Because it's a legacy debt and GMPC is a government institution, that is where Ministry of Finance comes in. What, but what, well, okay, I, I agree, but, 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 but GMPC paid that no, $6 let me million. Learn. Well, the, GMPC the said they paid that six million. They were supposed to honor. Well, Mr. Poku, Mr. Poku, there, there were some arrangement agreed between the parties. One of yeah, course, yeah, yes, didn't but that is what I'm saying. It. That mm -hmm. please, can I finish? That's what I'm trying to tell you. That it's unfortunate that we are where we are now because from me speaking to Wapko, I've spoken to Wapko today. Okay, their frustration is that there is non-communication. If you agree. With two attempts with somebody, they need to be follow ups. Okay. Now, the current bills are being paid. Like I said, just before Christmas, they were paid 40 million dollars, which is $3.25 million. Mm -hmm. What what was frustration is the legacy debt with GMPC is not forthcoming in giving a roadmap on that. Okay. So let's not create the impression that we are in some dire problem. By close of today, with the meetings that have been had from morning, and this afternoon, by close of today, WAPCO would have released the um, gas in the pipeline for power to be restored. Okay. But what the um, government is trying to look at is a long-term solution where either the Ministry of Finance will pay WAPCO directly without having it to go to GMPC, or the cash water pool will pay WAPCO directly without having to go through GMPC. That, that's fine. L let me bring in Benjamin Boache here. Ben, what's your own reading of the situation at hand? Yeah, I think it's, it's the same thing, and um, Kujo is right. It's the, uh, basically the, the curtailment of uh, supply of gas uh, from the West, which has caused the problem. But I just want to put on record that 
you know, these payment issues with WACO, um, government promised to put up that roadmap um, in October uh, for those payments to be made. Um, it's just that we have not been serious to actually put that roadmap together. What do we have to pay WAPCO has to come from ECG. Um, you know, and GMPC can only pay when they have received money uh, to be able to, to pay them. All right. So if the cash flow platform mechanism is not giving GMPC the money for them to be able to pay to WAPCO, it's not going to happen. I've seen letters and communications and exchanges from GMPC and WAPCO who suggested that in December, WAPCO gave us the warning that if we do not pay by 8th of January this year, uh, they're going to suspend uh, transmission of gas. Mm -hmm. And GMPC responded to that, you know, indicating that they work with ECG to be able to raise the money uh, to be able to pay them. That hasn't happened. All right. So essentially what it means is that we are not raising enough money to be able to pay uh, WAPCO. And it's not only outstanding balances, it is also recurring balance, uh, uh, accumulation because every month we're supposed to pay WAPCO about $7 million. All right. So if you go once in a while and put in $2 million uh, or $1.5 million, it's not going to cut it. You need to have a proper arrangement that allows payments uh, to be made uh, to them. And that's what we have failed to do, uh, for which reason uh, the curtailment actually happened. And today, the balance has actually grown to $24 million. I mean, people will ask, we've always been around this whole uh, finance issue. Why are we not able to get it right in terms of getting the needed resources financial-wise to deal with the, the, the issues that we have with these, uh, you know, WAPCO and the other IPPs? Because we are doing politics and not business. <laughs> Power is business, all right? We need to get people to be doing the business side of things and isolated from the politics. But in our country, the politics is always ahead of the business. And that is what is actually happening. And we've been crying about these things for the past decade, about how the energy sector ought to be managed. So the power, you know, sold can be uh, recovered in revenues. And everybody along the value chain is paid for it. Right? But you always have politicians uh, promising to keep light on, promising to uh, bring power uh, generation systems, promising to invest in transmission. When power is sold and is supposed to be recovered and invest in the power sector and also guarantee that those who are putting their money in the sector would actually get their money back. Government has intervened and participated in that space to the extent that people can even consume power for free. And because it is government, they don't care whether they want, they'll pay or not. And we are not collecting enough revenue um, the last time I checked, the under recoveries are uh, about seventy percent now. So what it means is that when power has been generated and sold, seventy percent of the money cannot be gotten back. So government has to raise money uh, from uh, the budget to be able to offset uh, uh, that difference, and it's escalating by the day. But that's you know, that's, right? that's disturbing. How do we correct that? We cannot go on. I mean, under collecting 70% of the power we, we produce, that's just too much. How do we deal with it? We have to go back to the roadmap that we set up in 2014, which we all agreed that we need to, uh, 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 you know, allow ECG uh, to be controlled by the private sector so that government can regulate it. Because government is a regulator through PRC. So if you have the private sector participating in that space, then government is able to regulate it. Today, PRC cannot do anything to ECG or whatever happens, yeah. right? So the mess continues, um, the under-recovery continues, the debt accumulation continues, and we are always in that same uh, situation and nothing has been done. We need to fix that and make sure that we treat the power sector as business so that it can be properly regulated by the government yeah. and ensure that the public funds are not you know, utilized to pay people's electricity bill. So something like a return to PDS of a kind? Not a return to PDS, a return to private sector, properly structured private sector participation that is transparently uh, awarded, uh, uh, not like the PDS arrangement. But we need to have a much more robust and transparent arrangement that welcomes genuine capital okay. uh, to actually invest uh, in the power sector. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bogu, let me bring you in here. What's your own proposal to government or, I mean, yes, to government as to how we can deal with this issue of having financial issues to deal with or to pay for power consumed? 
Well, um, myself and Ben have been pushing for this, and we were one of the few people that um, fought for the, the right thing to be done when they were negotiating these PDS agreements and stuff like that, and we worked hard on it. And as Ben rightfully said, it is the business side of the distribution and transmission that is creating the technical losses and the financial losses. You know, when you were doing your interviews with people, they were saying that, oh, we pay for power, we pay for power. Look, until recently, we were not doing full cost recovery for electricity. It's only recently that PULC actually used the right statistics to basically do full cost recovery. But the legacy debt is what everybody needs to talk about. It's already there. I've always said that as a country, if we don't pay for electricity in tariffs, we'll pay for it in taxes. Because the government does not do magic and conjure money. It's a, it is a close loop. So, like we have all been saying, the private sector participation is the best way to go because the, uh, the, the commercial losses is about 19%. If you are able to now run ECG as a business where you are basically closing all the loopholes and basically the ECG workers are doing the revenue mobilization, and we should give due to our brother Dubek, who has recently been going on a lot of um, revenue mobilization ventures that he's collecting money, but it's not enough. Okay, ECG has a lot of loopholes that still need to be um, closed. But again, when the public is crying that the government is not doing enough, when you go down to the root cause of the problem, it is really the, not the full recovery that the government in the past has been said, politics of not charging what we need to charge. Okay, so mm. we've created, we are all as citizens have been part of the problem. Okay. I mean, we've not paid what we're supposed to pay in the past. It's catching up with us. The right way forward is it that we can pile it on soon. It will be difficult in this hard time to get Ghanaians to pay more. Okay. But the right thing to do is for government to find ways to raise money. And how do we raise that money? In taxes. Okay. Because nobody can bring the money from outside. So, like I'm saying, the current situation is being dealt with, okay, by the close of today, that um, pipeline will be restored because there's a lot of high level intervention going on okay. and going forward I think that what the government will do is to look at a proper roadmap okay. taking it from right. PMPC mm. and being dealt with at the either Ministry of Finance or ECG level Okay, you made mention of you know taxation now we have cited a letter from the finance ministry on the implementation of value added tax on the supply of electricity above the lifeline for residential purposes. I want to read a bit of it. Hold on for me so you can come in. Uh, Aviji, Aviji, what does the letter say? Yes, yeah, so it's uh, actually uh, saying that the implementation of government's medium term revenue strategy and uh, IMF supported post COVID 19 program uh, for economic growth uh, through that the are going to charge some VAT for residential customers for electricity above the maximum consumption level specified for block charges for lifeline units in line with uh, the quota section there. And uh, they are expecting both the ECG and NETCO uh, to liaise with the GRA to ensure that this is implemented effective January 1, 2024. And uh, all of these taxes, when collected, are supposed to be returned to government through the GRA, not to be kept by the two power distributors okay interesting and uh, mr poku is this what you were you're talking about if well, you can do this for me um, 10 seconds well that but for this particular letter i, I it's been for me my checks it tells me that it's been stepped down and it hasn't been implemented because look we have to as much as some of us are trying for more money to be raised to fix ECG and to fix the sector um we cannot also pile on some of these taxes beginning of the year when we are all coming out of the um, festive season and a lot of taxes are taking effect from 1st of January. Okay. I all think right. the powers that be have agreed to step this down for the time being because it takes a lot of uh, sensitization. Even the ETG software needs to be updated in the way they calculate um, the non-lifeline for the residential. So it's not going to be implemented immediately there's a lot of consultation going to go on before it is implemented. But we can all agree that when we need money to fix something, it would have to come from tariffs of taxes. Okay. Right. But for me, I think the timing is wrong. Thank um, you. It's, just, it's a wrong time to introduce more VAT on electricity mm. at this stage. Okay, thank you. Uh, ben, what do you also make of this tax? No, okay, I also saw it just today. And I thought, I mean, the same way, that it was not going to generate more revenue. Uh, what we've seen 
and trended over the period is that the more you adjust the tariff, uh, the more people evade it. Um, because we don't have the systems, we haven't built a much more robust system uh, in ECG that allows um, you know uh, tariffs to be collected. Uh, you know, so the leakages deepens with these introductions. So when I saw it, I thought, I mean, again, we're going to lose more revenue by trying to pile up more on the bill rather than collecting from those who are not paying <laughs> and blocking the leakages. All right. Um, so if it's been stepped down, it's the, the right direction. Okay. Thank you very uh, much. But, mm. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Kojo Poku is an energy uh, analyst, and Ben Boache is the executive director for the Africa Center for Energy Policy, ASEP.